but you guessed well. But, but it's not for sale. On Rob on the Road, feed your curiosity, fans of Antiques Roadshow. This is an exciting immersion into the world of what it takes to create the number one ongoing primetime PBS program in America. Give us something. A secret. Hmm. Exclusive encounters captured on camera. How the hit show picks pieces for TV. You have caught me in the middle of interviewing the guest, and I have just decided to tape him. And bringing thousands of people together for an unforgettable experience. We really have the greatest job in the world. And when we're on tour, forget it. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. It's time for Behind the Scenes at Antiques Roadshow, Crocker Art Museum. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring California. Welcome to the Crocker Art Museum. I'm Rob Stewart. Since its opening in 1872, the Crocker has been the premier gathering place for people in our region to learn about, study, and appreciate fine art. In 2010, the new 125,000 square foot Teal Family Pavilion was completed and combined with the original building, triples the size of the museum. It houses and displays an extensive collection of art from California and around the world. Antiques Roadshow is where many PBS viewers turn to learn about and appreciate art and their family heirlooms and their found treasures. And in May of 2019, the two institutions came together. Antiques Roadshow chose the Crocker Art Museum as the location for their return to Sacramento. During the visit by the Roadshow team, our crews were given exclusive behind the scenes access the day before and all throughout the production. It's gonna be worth big bucks. Yeah? Yeah, we're gonna retire. <laughs> Just like that song, Bob, 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 that decision and others, including which cities are chosen each season, are led by executive producer Marsha Bimko. I had the pleasure of sitting down with her the day before the big production to talk about the production effort and the process that determines exactly what ends up in the episodes that you see each week. If you love Antiques Roadshow, and let's face it, who doesn't, it is the most popular PBS primetime television show, then you're gonna love this person right here, Marsha Bimko, is the executive producer, and it is her baby. My baby. Yes, it is. Yeah. Good to see you, Marsha. Good to be here. Thank you for taking time to be with us, and welcome to Sacramento again. Welcome back. I love it, I love being here. It's been 20 years. It's been 20 years. We last taped here in 2000, season five. So yeah. It's been a long time. 19 years. Wow, see, it's yeah. 19 okay, years. Okay, 19 years, yep. So we are in the Crocker Art Museum, and I love the changes that you have made on the show. Away from convention centers, yeah. and now we are surrounded by a foundation of even more history. Yeah. It's been such a nice change for us because the last time we were here, we did it from your convention center here in Sacramento, which was great. It, it, it provides a lot of things. It's a very handy way to do the show. It holds a lot of people. But what you end up happening is it's not the same kind of sizzle and excitement you get when you plop yourself into the environment in a place where you get a real sense of place from the spot we're doing the show from. You are all over the country 
and I'm curious what you think about Sacramento and the Northern California region in comparison to other places. I could move here. Really? And I wouldn't say that about comparison to other places, but I could live here. I like Why? it here. I love the, the friendliness of the atmosphere. I love the weather. What were your hopes for the show? You know, my hopes for the show are always that, first of all, all the people who come tomorrow have a good day. Never mind what we're capturing. I want people to have a good time. I want them to learn something. Then I'm a TV producer, and I get a little ruthless. <laughs> I want really good things to come, but not just valuable things, good stories. The story is king here. The story is king at the Antiques Roadshow. As thousands of people move through these lines, appraisers are on the lookout for hidden gems, fascinating stories, and the one-of-a-kind artifacts that might make it to air. Sir, tell me your story. Uh, this is a painting that's uh, found on the wall uh, in the shack that I live in Bangkok. Once an appraiser finds an item that might be show-worthy, they call over a senior producer for what's called the pitch. How do the pitches work when someone <laughs> comes to you and they've had their poker face mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm. the appraisers, and they come to you and say, Marsha, Marsha, yeah. Marsha, Marsha, we've got it. So how it works, like from the very beginning, let's say you come in with a vase, okay? Your vase is probably like most of the other people's vases. And so what you're gonna hear is this. You have a vase, it was made circa 1950. It's made in America, probably in Ohio. And um, it's worth about $50. Do you have any other questions? And you're done. And you ask any other questions. I don't know what you might have about that vase, but you may have them. Now, you bring in a vase. It's better than that one. And what the expert will say to you is, do you mind waiting for a producer? That's when the pitch happens. So that guest waits for me or Sam or Jill to come and listen to the appraiser will pitch us. It's very rare. Yeah. I haven't, frankly, seen one. He's going to pitch this thing like, or she, like a mad bunny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a mad bunny. Here's why. The return on their investment for being here tomorrow is that they get at least taped so they can make an episode of television. How did you get this car? Well, I inherited it from my father. Okay. Marcia allowed KBIE to film her during a pitch. It's a behind the scenes moment that's rarely seen by viewers. But it moves a ball down this track. Oh, wow. And the weight of the ball pushes down here. Marcia is talking to Tom whose family has owned this remarkable antique clock since 1895. He doesn't know yet what the appraisers have to say about this clock because the producers want to keep it a surprise. What's happening is you have caught me in the middle of interviewing the guest and I have just decided to tape him. And I am getting ready to put him in the process to go to the green room where he will learn about this item that's been in his family for quite a while. How nice. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for him to learn. But I can't tell you more now because he's sitting right next to us. Tom heads off to the green room, and a few hours later, he's up. He brings his clock to a multi-camera setup to be taped for the show. Now, we were not allowed to record audio during this portion. But just look and see what goes into filming a segment like this for air. We caught up with Tom after the taping to ask about his experience. Well, it was fun talking about that clock. I hadn't thought a lot about it in many years. I walked by it and looked at it, but uh, I put it on that table and without even leveling it, I managed to get it running and it ran well. And it's kind of exciting to me to see that clock run. Did you get a year on it or how old it could be? Yeah, he thought it was uh, in the 1880s. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Did he put a value on it? He said retail for 15000 What do you think about that? Well, I, I thought that was about right. <laughs> but you guessed well. But, but it's not for sale. You know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm certainly not going to sell it to anybody. Just because an item is taped for the show doesn't necessarily mean it'll end up on air. 
Marsha takes the footage of the appraisals back home with her and grades each one, ultimately deciding on the best stories. Then there's a fact checking process to make sure no mistakes make it on the show. The best of Sacramento will be divvied up into three one hour episodes. We will tape multi-cam segments, single camera segments, staff shots with the single camera, some digital segments. Out of all those things together, we'll tape about 150 elements we'll go back with. Oh, wow. To make the three episodes, to, to use digital material for digital as well. Now, that's 150 people who got taped out of the several thousand who came. So they better have a good experience because that is their day. They came to learn about the two most precious things in their home often, and they want to go out with more information. And by the way, it's usually not for a lot of value. <laughs> and from that, their favorite yeah, TV show. I know. From their favorite TV I show, know, though. But they do learn something. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that is, that is very rewarding for us, and I hope for them. I find Antiques Roadshow to be a period when I watch it as a viewer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where I am learning without even knowing it. It's and so I'm learning so much, other than what we're talking about. <laughs> it's so true, and it's a, you learn it with a spoonful of sugar. What I like about Roadshow is you don't notice your learning. So it doesn't feel like a lesson. I don't feel like I'm sitting down to, it's time to learn this. If you watch a season of Roadshow and you don't learn when the Civil War happened, what were you doing? There's no way you're not gonna learn that because so much that we see on the show was made in those years, 61 to 65. Before we wrap up, I just, I wanna say, I wanna thank you for what you do personally as a viewer yeah. um, and a fan because anytime I'm homesick, anytime I miss my grandparents who are gone, I can turn on your show and connect with the sweet spot in me. And you are, um, your free therapy. You know, that <laughs> is you. like the, so one of the nicest things everyone has ever said to me. And I mean it. Well, thank you. And my therapy is Tuesday mornings when I get the ratings. I want everybody watching. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Well, we have a little gift for you for when the ratings come in on Tuesday <laughs> after the Sacramento show oh. airs, which will be top-notch ratings. Yes. I can promise you that. Um, we have a KVIE t-shirt for Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, let me show you it on me. Well, I'm not taking my clothes off here, people. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. That okay? looks fantastic. Black and me with a colorful KVIE. Now it's give working. it an evaluation. What's it worth? Oh, this is priceless, babe. <laughs> oh, good. We priceless. like that. We like that a yeah. lot. Yep. And so are you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What a, what a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Here at the Crocker with the executive producer of Antiques Roadshow, Marsha Mimko. There are so many things that many of us hold dear, some priceless to us only. Others attract the attention of highly qualified Antiques Roadshow appraisers. That's the story of the vase or the vase. What did you think? I just saw your eye light up. Oh, it's, it's the first object that I've seen of this particular type on the road show. Really? Yeah. Been doing this for how long? I did it from the very first show. Yeah, 20 plus years. I did. And I don't think she knows what it is either. I love that. You have so, a good poker face. I tried. Oh, I don't know I how tried. you do it. How did it go? I think it went very well and I'm very surprised because I never would have dreamed that that was actually from the mid 1700s. Wow. And then my husband would say, and she'll never sell it. <laughs> Are you going to? <laughs> no. How would you say this overall experience it's, has been for it's you? It's been excellent and it's been wonderful. And I, my heart is kind of, I'm kind of shaky, but. It's been great, thank you so much. Jill Giles is the producer that gave the story of the vase the green light to be videotaped. That's just one of Jill's many responsibilities as I found out when we sat down and talked. It is 75, okay. The 
the goddess of line producing. This is Jill Giles, and she is with um, Antiques Roadshow, which is just phenomenal. Highest rated PBS primetime show? Ongoing, yes. And you pick the places. I am one of the producers that helps select the locations, yes. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for picking Sacramento. Mm. One of our appraisers that we work with all the time, Brian Witherell, is local here. So it was his suggestion. He said, you should really check this place out once we kind of switched format and went to these outdoor locations. And so we looked at it and we said, Brian, this place is perfect. This is a massive event to pull off. And what I'm seeing here is that it's like you're planning a huge event and that you harvest a television show from it. Exactly. Is that right? Very well said. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's an event for 3,000 people to bring two items each. So we're going to, in one day, appraise over 6,000 items. But at the same time, we need to have these eight camera crews roaming around and capturing enough footage that we can make three shows up, three episodes out of it. So let's break down that the process we're hearing about. What exactly do you do? So, well, we have lots of different, we wear many hats, and when I'm in the office, a lot of what I do is choosing the locations for the places that we're going to, you know, visit, going out, um, doing a site visit. So there's four of us that go, and we spend hours and hours taking video and footage and 360 videos, that sort of thing, and then kind of reporting back to the team and saying, this is a place that will work. And then I hire the crews and, like, local production help camera operators and grips that will help us make it happen. And then when we're on site, I'm one of the producers that chooses the items that go on television, along with Marsha Bemko, our executive producer, and Sam Farrell. So how many people did you have to bring in for this entire production? Well, we have about 55 crew members that we bring from Boston and from other areas that uh, travel with us. And we hired about 20, 20 local production folks. And then we have um, about 75 appraisers that volunteer their time. And then we have 125 uh, volunteers, which we were able to recruit through your help at yes, the local station. Absolutely. That's a, that's a huge team. This is reality television. and I get so sick of shows calling themselves reality television when they're not. Right. This is reality TV. Right. Because yeah. you hear the stories from people that have sentiment behind items or they found something. But I really find your show as a storyteller. Absolutely. And if the story isn't interesting to you, it's like wait three minutes yeah. and the next story might be. So if you're not into the history of maps and map making, and then Three minutes later, you'll, you might be interested in a painting and some regional artist that might be more interesting to you. That's why I like it. In watching in the past couple of years, Jill, particularly this, the season that's airing now, you have really upped the production, the involvement, the, um, the gee whiz and the fun. Yeah. Is that in, that's intentional? And I think having it outside and in these really historic and iconic locations, it's it's really become part of the fabric of the show. So even though you're talking about a painting, you're standing in front of the Crocker Museum. It just it really adds another depth, another element that I think is people are really drawn to. And we're getting a lot of feedback from our viewers that, that they really love it. The new the new shows, the outdoor shows. What is it that makes you have this drive? and passion. Well, it's working for the Antiques Road Show is wonderful because you're part of a really powerful team, of, like strong, powerful people who are able to produce. We really get things done. So I feel like really, I feel really grateful to be a part of this team. I feel like our job everywhere we go is new and exciting and different. So I mean, when people say you have the greatest job in the world, we really have the greatest job in the world. And when we're on tour, forget it. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. It's, and I feel like we're putting out quality television. So it's something to be really proud of. Arlie Solka is a glass appraiser who's always on the hunt for treasures from Tiffany and other master glass makers. She shares the story of her holy grail find. Arlie Salka, appraiser with Antique Road Show and have been for more than 20 years. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And welcome to Sacramento. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. This is my first time. Oh, nice. So there are a lot of people in Sacramento with wonderful items. Are you expecting anything in this region? 
I'm always a little nervous about glass because when you come to this part of the country because I worry that people are a little more reluctant to retain it or to collect it because there are, have been some things known as earthquakes here. But I have to tell you, I have no idea what's coming in. You never do. Never. Oh, never. No, it's always every, one show to the next. I wish for certain things the night before, I can promise you that. <laughs> and I probably could wish for them for decades, by the way, which I did for two decades. I waited for something to come in did it? that finally came in in Newport, Rhode Island. Oh, and what was it? It was a piece of Tiffany lava glass. Very rare, very special, very esoteric, and some people have told me it was a little ugly. Wow. But it was a, at the top of the collecting heap for Tiffany glass collectors. This practically stopped my heart <laughs> when I saw it in the box. This is the piece I was waiting for for 20 years. Oh, wow. And it's extremely special. It is meant to look like molten lava on the surface of the vase. An example like this in a retail shop could sell between $100,000 and $150,000. Where's my brother? <laughs> wow. So you take the items that you think are worthy to be on the show and you go and pitch it. Exactly, and not in front of the guest. And usually when a guest brings me something and I think it's TV worthy, I don't tell them anything about it. I just say, you know, this is kind of interesting. Um, I'd like to pitch it for TV. Do you have a few hours? Because it might take a while. The process can be long. Um, would you be interested in going on TV? And um, most people say yes. The poker face is for the person who owns it? Absolutely. Okay, I see. Oh, no, no. You have no idea what happens when, when, when I pitch it to Marcia. You're like, guess what I got? Like, I have to go. I have to be hidden because sometimes it's called jumping up and down. Uh, no, there are times, or, or one, as I said one time, um, when the piece came in in Rhode Island, and I had to go over to the, the uh, volunteer who was wearing the headset for, to call over the producer, I said, tell them that Arlie has found the holy grail. <laughs> I love that. I was just, you know, and, and, and then I went very calmly back to my seat. <laughs> and I said, uh, the producer will be over in a little while. Uh, let, me, let me seat you over here. And the other thing that we do, and this is very important, all of the appraisers tell the guests to cover up their items. Oh. Because sometimes we have people who also want to be appraisers who are not appraisers, and they'll go, oh, that's a piece of Tiffany. Oh, you know, okay. and then it spoils it. That's interesting. So once you've found that item that you know you want to be on the show, it's it's pause. We're going to do this and we're going to unveil it real, which is real TV. Exactly. That's fast. Show me your poker face. Oh, that's good. Show me your holy grail face. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Actually, it's really important, too, that you get excited when you're pitching something, because if you're not excited when you're pitching something and you go, well, I guess I could go on TV with this, you're not going to go on TV, I can tell you that. What are the, the signs that you know you're on to something valuable? Uh, usually I recognize it immediately. That, that's, the, that's the beginning. Uh, but also, it's, in, it's always interesting to listen to the guest stories uh, because information gets handed down from generation to generation and sometimes it gets enhanced. <laughs> and ultimately what we do as appraisers is we just look at the object. How are you? I'm good, how are you? How did you get the piece? Um, I befriended a little old neighbor lady back in the 70s and she gave it to me. It's what we call Bristol glass. Bristol? Yes. So it, in its condition, probably worth about $75. You do all of this, in fact, all of the appraisers do, for free. That's true. In fact, flight, expenses and all, you do all of that. We do, absolutely. And, and you know, it's a great way to give back to public television. I really feel good about it. Uh, and, and plus, you know, our mission is to educate people. That's what public television does. And we're here to do that. And it feels good to do that. And that's one of the reasons why we all participate. Oh, I love that. Well, then let's end on a good note. OK. Thank you so You're much. You're very welcome. What a pleasure to talk to Thank you. Thank you. And that was good lovely. luck with all the appraisals here. Thank you. I hope there are lots of them. <laughs>
And all I have to say while you're still here, for all of the girls out there, is that I am king of the road. You don't have to be a man to be king. And uh, girl power, hashtag girl power. I know that's not part of this, and it'll probably never make air. It hashtag like girl it. power, babe. Any secrets you can give away, because you hold all of the secrets. You know all about the show. And as you know, you're the top show on PBS, so give us something. A secret? Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's so much a secret, but most of the people who are here today have J-U-N-Q-U-E. <laughs> Is that a secret? <laughs> Maybe not so much. <laughs> but I like the way you spell it. I just want to be respectful. It, it, it's, it's junk with a flair. <laughs> junk with a flair. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. All right. I love that. Girl power. Yeah, all the girl way. Power, What's hashtag, your hashtag again? Hashtag girl power. Hashtag antiques road show too. That, there right. you go. Both. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at Antiques Roadshow at the Crocker Art Museum. We are grateful to the Roadshow team and the Crocker Art Museum for the time and the access they provided us just for you. I'm Rob Stewart. We'll see you next time. Show me your poker face. Oh, that's good. Show me your Holy Grail face. <laughs> <laughs> Black in me with a colorful KVA. Now give it an evaluation. What's it worth? Oh, this is priceless, babe. <laughs> oh, this is priceless. Like that. We like that a yeah. Lot.